So now let's talk about the different types of motors. Okay, so if we talk about different types of motors, like as I said, we have two different classifications based on types of power. One is nothing but AC power, the other one is the DC power, right? So when we talk about AC versus DC, both have certain classifications further. The machines are of two types, AC and DC. So motors are also of two types. So because we need to understand the difference, it is important that we need to know what are the different AC motors exist and what are the different types of DC motors that exist. Okay, so we, we know that. Let me take my pointer, okay, and screen. Okay, when we talk about electric motors, AC and DC, I would like to describe it in this way. I would like to put it in this way. If we talk about only DC motors, okay, if we talk about only DC motors, okay, DC motors are also categorized into various kinds, three different types. We know that. The first different type is nothing but is called as DC shunt motor. Shunt stands for parallel motor. Okay. DC shunt motor where voltage remains constant, current is variable. Another one is nothing but DC series motor. Okay. The next one is DC compound motor, combination of shunt and series. So these are the different various classifications. And this compound people know very well that is nothing but it has DC long shunt compound and DC short shunt compound DC motor. Okay. Short shunt DC short shunt compound motor and DC long shunt compound motor. All right. What I'm trying to tell you is very simple. If you are talking about DC, it's just about values without any angle involvement. So that the, what is, what is the meaning of that is nothing but in DC, the power is simply expressed as product of voltage multiplied by current. Okay. So when we are talking about this, we look at this equation and we find that there are only two possible conditions for this equation. One time you can hold voltage constant change current. Another time you can keep current constant and change voltage. Okay. Or you can design slight voltage variation with current variation. So that is nothing but if you are keeping voltage constant is shunt. If you are keeping current constant is series. If you are including both of them, then it is compound. So now when we talk about motors, what are the main parts of the motors? So there are some few main parts of DC motors. One is the field winding. Okay. This is the symbolic representation FW. I'll write it in short FW field winding. And the other one is nothing but is a conductor. Okay. Conductor means it's an armature in a technical word. So it's for the motor. Okay. So we'll, we'll define it as uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it as a, a and a, a. Okay. The starting terminal is a and the ending two terminals are a, a. Okay. No problem. Then next thing is it has to feed some load. Load is a resistor, simple resistor for DC because DC means resistor. Resistor does not have any angle. It has only value. That's why we opt for uh, resistors for DC systems. Okay. Overall, you will find every time you observe with DC systems, you'll find only resistors. The reason is it has value and it does not have any angle involvement. Angle involvement means angle between voltage and current involvement. It has only value. Angle is zero. So that is the reason all DC systems will find it. So it is all about how do you connect these three symbols, three components. One is the load. This is the conductor or armature. You call it as armature technically. And this is nothing but your field winding. So how do you connect this? If you connect three of them in parallel, it is shunt motor in series, series motor in uh, shunt and uh, series parallel and series long, long shunt, short shunt. Okay. So that is the way it can go up to DC compound. So now this is the classification of DC motors. They all work on the principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So what is that? That means, okay, let me change the color. That means if we talk about this in short, that means it has one input. It has one input, as I said, and it has one output. Output is rotating mechanical energy and input is electrical energy. Okay. So whenever, whenever we are keeping a current carrying conductor in magnetic field, 
it tends to the conductor tends to rotate that is the principle of dc motor okay so you just uh, remember this you have some magnetic field set up by this field winding okay and you have a conductor armature or conductor if this conductor is current carrying already there is some charge flowing in it it becomes current carrying conductor and if it is under the influence of magnetic field then this will tend to rotate this is how electrical energy gets converted into mechanical energy what do i mean by that is very simple it is a motor so now coming to ac motors now dc motor classification i did discuss now ac motor you have asynchronous motor and synchronous motor so i'll write it down over here okay i'll i will have to take it uh, uh, for uh, the distinction between the a uh, for ac motors asynchronous motors and synchronous motors okay so i'll talk about this over here in the next slide so if we talk about asynchronous motor let us say what are asynchronous motors these motors are nothing but three phase induction motors okay these motors are nothing but they are called as three phase induction motors okay so these are nothing but the three phase induction motors when we talk about three phase induction motor you remember that it has it has one stationary frame okay with magnetic poles and inside of that frame there is one rotating component called as rotor one stationary frame called as stator and another rotating frame called as rotor okay this stationary frame is provided with three windings three different if it is a three phase it is provided with three different windings okay it is provided with three different windings r y b and supply is given to those three windings to produce rotating flux okay what do i mean by that is very simple let me uh, take this one again quickly let me uh, try to put up what i'm saying to you people okay so it's like uh, if i am going if i am going to this with a red mark okay so let's say i have roughly i'm drawing to make you understand is a frame i have three different uh, distinct uh, windings so i am giving three different voltages i am applying three different voltages vr vy and vb all right so three different flux gets produced first is the red flux then comes the second winding flux then comes the third flux all the three windings interact with each other as a result the flux now becomes the rotating magnetic flux such a flux is called as rotating magnetic flux and this flux rotates with some speed such a speed is called as synchronous speed now this is rotating now so it is rotating with some speed so this speed is synchronous speed and it is given mathematically as 120 f by p where f stands for frequency of supply and p stands for number of magnetic poles then we have another sub -comp component short circuited conductor rotating conductor called as rotor so when this flux is cutting this short circuited conductor or in other words later on this current carrying rotor whatever the current carrying rotor is there it is kept under the influence of this magnetic field this rotor also tends to rotate it is this is nothing but faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what is happening is the current carrying conductor rotor is under the influence of rotating magnetic field it will tend to rotate as a result output is mechanical engine uh, mechanical energy okay output is mechanical energy so this is the principle working of your three phase induction motor now from three phase you remove one phase out of three you remove one it becomes two phase out of three you remove two it becomes one phase so what happens is the field gets weak you know it doesn't remains the same field okay but one point you have to note here is very important this rotor rotates with speed called as rotor speed so actually what is happening in asynchronous motor like three phase induction motor is nr is trying to catch ns that is why the rotor is rotating okay so there is some difference between nr and N ns and nr so that relative difference between ns and nr with respect to ns is called as slip factor is called as slip factor it is denoted by letter s so this is the very very important point most of the people don't understand the difference relative difference between the rmf and the rotor okay so that is the slip factor so now uh, now one short note i want to make it over here i talked about a synchronous three phase induction motor i talked about a synchronous okay 
this is asynchronous then what do you mean by synchronous motors okay there are various types of motors if you remove brushes in the motor it become brushless dc motor okay and if you have permanent magnet it will become permanent magnet motor okay then you you have switch reluctance motor okay okay and etc you have so many hybrid srm hybrid okay etc etc how to model this see if you know one for example i told you you take three phase okay you can remove one phase it becomes two phase you remove two phases it becomes one phase similarly we have certain conditions okay mathematical analysis conditions and construction differences in terms of different machines but one point to note here is n s will be always equal to nr if you are talking about synchronous motors okay that is the classification i hope i have explained everything in this and uh, moving on forward this is what i was talking about you uh, this is the setup you can look at the stationary frame which is responsible for production of this circular you know rotating magnetic flux you can see over here and if you look at the second picture this has the stator and uh, it has this has the stator and it has the rotating part in between the inside the stator that is a rotor okay and also the speed, uh, synchronous speed which i have spoken about the synchronous speed is ns is equal to 120 f by p 120 f by 120 f by p okay then let us move on to the next part this is the same representation let let us take the same representation what we have the rotors are of different types spiral gauge rotor and slip ring rotor okay so this is a practical uh, view of how the internal side of your three phase induction motor looks like okay so this is how it uh, looks like and then i have done the comparative uh, analysis of different types of motors if you look at the different types of motors for example i am looking at automobile industry i want to make uh, utilize of my motor in terms of maximum benefits with respect to certain parameters see what we need to do is we need to do a separate uh, study on what are the different uh, characteristics of the motor suppose if i catch one ac motor how can i make certain differences zero or how can i bring certain similarities by making some mathematical changes or by making some construction changes and get the outcomes of this get the outcomes of this motors for different motor for example you look at dc motor column you look at manufacturability and controllability it has a very high performance there okay and you look at speed range okay good fair enough and if you look at the comparisons over the others you will find the differences i rated as plus plus okay as the max and plus as less than max zero okay neutral okay neutral and minus is negative poor i mean very poor performance okay so that is how i rated all the different uh, scenarios and i have also rated in terms of cost because we need to keep an eye on cost if nothing is economical then it is waste so we have to keep two things as the main concerns one is the cost other is the efficiency that matters a lot so there is a need for research to build a best machine or the best motor to redesign a best motor by modeling it mathematically and coming up with the highest possible efficiency okay so with minimum losses for these parameters listed over here okay so this points you have to note and then let us come to the uh, case study which is the final part of this webinar very interesting part of this webinar which uh, i think everybody should know about this it's a very simple thing i have taken a dc motor okay I, though i am representing a conventional uh, diagram over here if you see this is a conventional diagram instead of uh, using this uh, conventional diagram instead of using this uh, dc to ac and induction motor i have uh, changed this and model it to dc motor okay so when i say instead of this i am going to use a dc motor to to rotate my wheels over here to rotate my wheels i am rotating this wheels if i am rotating this wheels okay the energy input could be various sources okay if various sources are used it becomes hybrid if only electrical sources are used it becomes electric so that's why the vehicle is electric okay so now if you look at this i am using a dc motor 
Okay, I want to control its speed, and I'm using a DC DC converter because the input is DC, output is DC. So I'm using one converter in between. It is a single stage, only one converter, only one single converter I'm using. That's why it is single stage. As a result, efficiency will also be more. I have less stages of conversion, more efficient and more economical the system would be. But there are other flaws. Okay, I'll not talk about the flaws as if now. But let us look at the example for the case study. So moving on forward, one thing is I have to control its speed. Okay, so I need to know what are what is the. I need to know what is the what are the speed control methods. Okay, what are the speed control methods for DC motor? Okay, I know there are two methods by which I can control the speed. One is called as the field control method. Another one is called as the armature control method. So there are two methods. Okay, so why there are two methods? Again, we need to come to that. All right, I'll explain you why only there are two methods. Okay, so again the same thing. I I, I talked about everything very logically. If you think you will understand what I'm talking about, okay, you need to think. It depends on your thought process how you look at things. Suppose if you talk to me, why only two controls? Uh, speed control. I look at it in this way. DC means power is VI. So it is dependent on either on voltage or it is dependent either on current. That means it is dependent on two variables. That's why two controls. One is voltage control. Another one is current control. Similarly, I look at the connections also in electrical engineering. either all the components are connected in parallel or all the components are connected in series so why only parallel why only series so only two variables again two conditions make voltage variable current same make voltage same current variable so parallel and series two connections or combination of both is compound hybrid connection nothing but okay so compound i'll call it as in technical terms of dc okay so now coming to the speed actually i'm looking at the speed not at the type of connection okay so when i talk about speed it is like either i can control speed by varying voltage keeping current same okay varying voltage keeping current same or i can keep voltage same and vary current okay so that's why the speed can be controlled by two distinct methods two different methods or only two methods one is the field control method okay and the other one is the armature control method okay and now one more important point that i want my audience to understand is about emf equation of dc motors so what is the emf we usually talk about emf is nothing but rate of change of flux in simple words but for dc machine we model this uh, flux as flux multiplied by number of poles okay and this time is nothing but number of revolutions per second and this is for per conductor like that we have z number of conductors per path okay like that we have some z number of conductors per parallel path right so that means the emf equation of dc is very simple that is e is equals to 5 pn z by 60a okay E is equal to okay phi p n z by sixty a okay what is what now phi means flux phi means flux okay p means poles n means speed with which the motor rotates in rpm this is measured in rpm flux is measured in weber okay like length is measured in meters flux magnetic flux is measured in weber okay and uh, z is the constant a is the number of parallel paths z is the conductor number of armature conductors number of armature conductors okay and uh, a is number of parallel paths parallel paths means there are some paths in which these conductors are placed so that's why it is a function of that path so clearly e is a dependent okay let us say emf equation if it can be modeled e and n what is the relation there is some relation between the emf voltage that is nothing but voltage and speed and there is also relation between nn phi if you look at the relation between nn phi you will see that it is uh, inverse okay one time you can take that another time you can take a relation nn e is directly proportional so with respect to voltage we are talking direct relation for speed 
with respect to current it is inverse current means the flux the amount of whatever the field winding you have when the current is flowing through this okay what happens is the flux gets produced in this winding such a flux is phi okay so that is nothing but the relation between the speed and flux as shown so two methods to jot down inverse to flux directly proportional to voltage inverse to current armature current or directly proportional to voltage for shunt dc motor we talked about okay so you look at this so the point here is very simple the important point to take away from this is very simple that is we have some rated uh, speed that is expected from every machine is given by the manufacturer let us say that uh, this uh, rated speed is 1500 rpm revolution per minute okay so if i want to control the speed above rated i want to increase the value of speed from 1500 to let us say 2000 rpm so i have to go for flux control method so this is a circuit diagram for that you see that there is a source okay there is a source because input must be given to the motor there is a source there is an armature and there is a uh, field winding all right okay so now if you look at the field winding and this and voltage source okay they are connected in parallel and there is a rheostat that is connected in series to the field winding okay this is in series to the field winding let us say the voltage source resistance is negligible the input to voltage source also has some resistance that is negligible i treated this as a, if if it is a generator it should be a load actually without voltage source but if it is a motor the point that i want to include here is it's only the source with zero resistance so that is the voltage replace it by voltage previously i have taken resistor and uh, you have to take voltage for motor okay so that is more important for motors input is there as electrical energy so voltage source must be there so now here if you vary this resistance the current in this gets varied as a result the flux gets varied if flux is varied as per this relation the speed gets varied okay so that is the thing you have to understand then uh, the next thing is quite the resistance position is changed from field winding to armature if it is changed to armature instead of uh, controlling speed above you can control speed below okay so let us say this is the 1500 rpm now you want to control the speed below so you go by this method armature control method very simple but the resistance position is changed in series with the armature then coming to the converter if you look at the block diagram what i mean to say is i want to show you the speed control okay the vehicle this one okay the speed second thing is i talked about dc motor then i talked about i am talking about dc dc converter i'll put all of them together and control the motor okay so this is nothing but dc dc converter so what is the meaning of this dc dc converter let us say you give input as some input voltage 100 volts for example or uh, some 48 volts 48 volts you give input output you are getting across the load as across the motor as uh, let us say 4 volts so 48 volts is getting clipped or reduced to 4 volts it's called as buck if it is opposite let us say 48 you are giving and you are getting 104 then 48 you are giving you are getting 104 volts then it is boost what if i can combine circuit 1 and circuit 2 buck and boost so that becomes buck and boost here the important point you have to understand is this is a switch okay this is the switch this is unidirectional diode this is a inductor this is a capacitor okay so all right yes i think i have time so i can uh, explain this to you not a worry thing i i can explain it out to you so what i am saying is this is something like this circuit is like a voltage source with a switch okay this is s so now we have an inductor over here all right when this switch is open this source is disconnected it is nowhere connected to the inductor okay and then here we have the load in the extreme end okay this is the load and of course the capacitor in shunt which is supporting the load okay of both plates of equal sizes c and l okay and uh, it is uh, provided by the diode so if you see that when the switch is uh, 
off when the switch is not connected you can see that this circuit is discarded this part left hand side is discarded the source is no way connected whatever the energy that is stored in the inductor and the capacitor that will oscillate so what happens here is a very simple phenomena that is whatever the conduction that goes or that takes place that takes place with diode and this diode act as the free wheeling path to the inductor so energy whatever energy is stored in the inductor gets discharged with the help of a free wheeling path of the diode so this is the off condition okay so during the on state what happens similarly if you go for an on state suppose let us say let us say you go for an on state the on means this uh, this is on okay let uh, let me uh, on that okay let us consider this is on okay no problem let's take this okay let's say this is on and this is connected over here this is connected let's say that once this is connected this diode is reverse to the positive polarity of the source okay this diode is okay this diode is positive and this is cathode so it is blocking that means this is not there so what happens if it is not there it charges the inductor and goes to the load so during the on stage this is not there that means the path is like this so it charges the inductor okay and feeds the load and come back to the source okay capacitor is just trying to maintain the voltage bit across the load that's all okay any drop the capacitor will charge and discharge okay this is the buck converter the similar is the identical circuit diagram we can draw for boost and buck boost okay together and we can uh, we know that when inductor stores the capacitor is opposite to that it dissipates like it uh, discharges okay so when uh, capacitor is charging the inductor is discharging something like that so you can say that these are just like acting alternatively as open circuit and short circuit one is short circuit one is open circuit so they are oscillating opposite way from short circuit to open circuit and open circuit to short circuit okay all the conditions for the circuit okay you will get to know not a very thing so the next thing is okay moving on forward the simulation part what provides an important thing to to engineers is building up their vision to connect the circuit okay building up their vision to connect the theory whatever they study into a practical setup how can you achieve the practical setup converting your theory or theoretical studies into simulation converting your animation studies into simulation so theory animation into simulation and theory animation simulation into mathematics and converting all these four into practical world so one such study is needed to do simulation until now what we have seen is some mathematical concepts related some theory okay and some animation about the field how it is happening okay and now we are looking at the simulation part so i have done the same simulation of three different circuits so i'll show you the input input here is 100 volts i'm talking about buck controller input is 100 volts output if you see it's 69 it's reduced 100 got reduced to 69 if it is reduced it is buck both are dc that's why dc dc buck controller okay then similarly using a matlab platform we can simulate it for boost converter so 24 input output 73 boosted 23 is greater than 24 so voltage got increased so both are dc 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 boost controller why not combine one and two becomes buck boost <laughs> control so that is nothing but 48 output is 4 40 4 means less than 48 and same circuit condition changed okay so output is 103 4 103 control so i have a control of voltage either below the rated speed or above the rated speed okay for one particular method of speed control voltage control so now what happens is uh, you can control the speed the idea is you can control the speed the rough rough part i will tell you now conversion of this projection from theory to simulation or animation from their mathematics to practical you will fail as an engineer if you don't uh, convert this this is the logic 
everybody we will fail if we can't convert what we are saying that is the important point to be noted over here so the point here is practical setup and its components so if you look at this these are dc dc converters this i bought it and kept it on my table actually i'm not having it now so but anyhow this is this is what uh, we have i've taken the picture so these are the dc dc uh, converters this is these are two batteries these two are motors okay these two are motors and there is one throttle that is hidden behind the motor throttle means variable resistor okay so now we have done the simulation studies okay we have understood everything now how do you put this all to get a electric drive unit simple case study which we did so for that i would like to go to the next slide and uh, play one video for you a small video to show you what is the case study that we have done and this case study is going to help you that is nothing but how to design a simple electric drive unit with its components so finally if you look at this if you look at this vehicle if you look at this see the throttle is being changed okay the throttle is being changed the speed is being changed the same thing you change the regulator of your ceiling fan in short there could be some differences there could be some similarities not a worry thing but observe the way i can say that finally we are born electric so this is how things work for simple edu unit with its components so now the career paths if you are really passionate about things if you have the zeal in you you can find the paths wherever you go even the end roads will result in some pavement for you so that is nothing but automobile industry the first target train locomotives simulation and design industries there are some industries they need simulation studies to uh, make their you know to form their product or manufacture their product related to a very big automobile industry now these days it is electric so you have to understand that and as an electrical design engineer power electronics engineer battery management system engineer so this is how this works